Now it's time to talk about revocable living trusts. Revocable living trusts are sometimes known as will substitutes, and they're often thought of as ways to avoid probate. Now you might remember when we talked about probate property, that that is the property controlled by your will, and we talked about non-probate property. That's property that's not controlled by your will. We looked at these different types of assets. Now that the assets over the right hand side, that's the non-probate property. And if you look down at the bottom of that list, you'll see revocable living trusts. And you might recall that when we were talking about non-probate property, I said that this was property where the, the person who received the property on the death of the owner was a matter of contractual right. It was built into the, the contract that created that type of property. So we talked about life insurance policies, for example, where the life insurance death benefit passed to the person named as the beneficiary on a beneficiary designation form, and the life insurance policy says that that's the person who receives the life insurance death benefit, though. So that the person who receives the death benefit receives it as a result of the provisions in the contract that relate to that type of property. And revocable living trusts are that type of thing as well. The people who receive the property in the revocable living trust are the people who are identified in an agreement. Keep in mind that wills are effective only at death. Therefore, they can do very little or nothing at all while you're alive. Keep in mind that when it comes to your will, before the will's effective, it has to be taken down to the probate court. And this is, this is after you die. The will has to be taken down to the probate court, and the court makes a finding that it is, in fact, your last will and testament. And at that point, its instructions kick in, and the executor of the will has, has the power to carry out those instructions. So it really can't do anything for you at all while you're alive. When it comes to living trusts or revocable living trusts, however, the key thing about that is it is created by an agreement. It's an agreement between you as the person who establishes the trust and your trustee. And earlier we talked about how trusts work, so I won't go into it in great depth now. Just to say that because it's established by an agreement, between you and the trustee, right now while you're alive, it can deal with lifetime issues. It includes provisions that deal with how the property is to be managed while you're alive, not just after your death. So you see, after you pass away, the assets in the trust are disposed of by the terms of the trust. If, if you owned everything in the trust, if the trust owned everything you had, there wouldn't even be a a need to go to the probate court to have the will probated. Probate could be avoided. That's why it's thought of as a probate avoidance technique. Now, how do you establish a revocable living trust? Well, first you prepare a trust agreement. It looks very much like any other written agreement. So you prepare a trust agreement and there are other documents related, including a will, even though you have a trust agreement and even though you might be intending to transfer all your, your property to the trust created by that agreement, you still need a will because it is likely that you'll leave something out. You'll forget to put something in the trust or some type of property uh, will be acquired after the trust agreement is established and you'll forget to put it in. So you prepare the trust agreement and then you transfer assets to the trustee who is identified in the trust agreement. And keep in mind, if one of your key goals is to avoid probate, that would mean all your assets must be transferred to the trust. But there are exceptions to that, and and I don't want to mislead you into transferring all your, you know, your, your IRAs and your 401ks and assets of that sort to the revocable trust, because that could create quite an income tax disaster. But the idea is, if you're going to avoid probate, the revocable living trust owns all the assets that you would have considered probate assets before you set up your revocable living trust. Your retirement plan account, beneficiary designations, IRAs, beneficiary designations. You might make the trustee the beneficiary of those, but there's some, some important income tax reasons why you would not as well. And those are all things that need to be discussed 
um, while you're, you're setting this type of thing up. So the terms of the revocable living trust include, first of all, identifying the trustee. The trustee can be pretty much anybody you want. It's not unusual for, for you to be your own trustee of your revocable trust. So you might be the trustee. You might identify your spouse to be a co-trustee or a child to be a co-trustee or, or maybe you don't want a co-trustee. So you you might have yourself as a a, a trustee and perhaps you'll name somebody a, and designate them as a standby trustee. That's the person who would be trustee if you can't serve for some reason. For example, if you become incapable, you'd have a standby trustee to to act in your place. Anyway, the, the agreement includes the trustee's promise to manage, take care of the property in the trust and dispose of the trust property according to the instructions in the agreement. Typically, the trustee will pay the income and the principal of the trust to or for the person who's creating that, that trust, the grantor, that's you. And also, the terms of the trust could include other people as beneficiaries. So it, it's not unusual for the trust agreement to say that if the grantor becomes incapable, then the grantor's assets and the income on those assets could be used for the benefit of other family members. This is a, especially helpful if the grantor is providing support for somebody, somebody else, and is worried that his incapacity may disrupt that support to that other person. Important terms of the revocable trust or revocable living trust include the power in the grantor to revoke the agreement and also the power in the grantor to amend the agreement and the power in the grantor to remove the trustee and appoint a successor trustee. The grantor typically controls all investment decisions while the the grantor is alive and, and capable. And the terms of the trust typically say that at the grantor's death, the trustee distributes all the trust property as directed in the agreement. Next, we compare revocable trust plan versus the alternative. 